Today, we change the calendars and see spring around the corner. As it approaches, so does the surprise postseason. Niagara Lock Monster season came in like a lamb this year, dropping their first three. But both them and the Barry Blizzard are roaring like lions, each on two game win streak. The march to the playoffs is in full swing, and our Sunday matinee is a big one. Sealax Lacrosse on the JPI Sports Network. Hi, everyone. Matthew Carrick joined by Steven Stamp once again as it is March, it is the March to the playoffs, and we could have a four-way tie, five-way tie with four wins apiece. We could, how long did you work on that opening? Longer than <laughs> I prepped for the rest of the two hours. <laughs> yeah, we could indeed. It's a very interesting scenario with Southwest at four and three. We've got a couple of teams at three and three, Barry's three and two, and uh, Niagara's two and, or th two and four. Um, we could, and, and the thing is, we were talking about it before the game, it's not even a long shot that it could be, everyone could be four and four. It is a, a very realistic scenario. For Barry, one of the big things in their favor is their player to watch, the return of Caleb Wiles, um, wearing number 14 this year, and you know, he started out the season with Vancouver Stealth, had, uh, had some decent performances, but once, you know, they picked up Johnny Powers, once they got um, Corey Small. That was very good for him, those are two big <laughs> names. So he is back on the other side, Devin Sartor, you pointed out to me on the way down here today, he's second on the team in assists. He's done it very quietly, but he is a very effective player for them. He's been doing a really nice job uh, playing with the rest of this team. They have such a deep cast, and he's been very good for them. Yeah, definitely part of that supporting cast, mm. but a lot of the big guys that we expected to be there, not in the lineup. Consistency's been their struggle. Mm. Yesterday, we saw the reemergence of Mac O'Brien. Today, Caleb Wiles returns to Sealax for the Barry Blizzard, starting a net for them. Angus Dinley, one of the most solid goaltenders you'll see in this league. Yeah, and he's been very consistent for them. Gives them a chance to win every day. And so much of their game is predicated around solid defense and getting good goaltending from Angus Dinley. Doug Buckin at the other end, last week his first game in the Canadian Lacrosse League. He was very good for Niagara. He did exactly what he needed to do to help them, keep, give them a chance to win the game. They did it with, a, a, like we said, a good all-around team effort. So Doug Buckin right back in there today, and it'll be interesting to see if the if the uh, blizzard have had a chance to adjust to what they saw of him last week and while we talk about niagara's goaltending a congratulations to dave derucho his first national lacrosse league win last night yeah. backed up by zach boychuk the reason doug buckin is starting here this afternoon here is the standings as we look at it one game remaining for southwest that'll happen next week durham osweekin niagara niagara's got two more including today and barry with three left they're sitting in the driver's seat here as they control their own destiny. Yeah, you know, Barry has a good situation. A, a Barry win today would give them and Southwest assured playoff spots. Now, if Niagara wins today, everything is up in the air. <laughs> the whole works. We were talking to uh, Chad Asseltine from the league about this before, and we said, wouldn't that be cool if everyone was four and four? And he was just shaking his head, because he's the guy who has to figure out all the tiebreakers. <laughs> yeah, and totally glad that it, it's him and not me, if that were the case. The end of Julius Caesar's reign was the year 44 AD. Someone's win streak ends today, maybe the reign of the Niagara Lock Monsters championship team. Whose Ides of March will occur this afternoon? Four quarters away is the answer.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, the officials for today's game. John Watson, John Watson, sorry, John Zavos, Joel Furman, and in the penalty box working the 30-second clock is Kyle Cropman. As we said, in a great matchup, a huge one in terms of playoff implications, not just for these two teams, but pretty much the entire rest of the league. Yeah, it affects everybody what happens here today. Southwest looking on with interest because they know they've lost Mike Burke to the National Lacrosse League. They're still adjusting to life without him and trying to figure out how it is. What a nice little move there by Mike <laughs> Gillen. The ball rolls away from the center dot. He picks it up, the ref puts it back. And how about Tommy Watt before the game? He's a scratch today for Barry. Him and uh, Gillen going through face-off drills in the warm-up, just kind of off to the side by themselves. We've seen that from Barry throughout the season so far and we'll see if it works here as we've got a huge battle down there still looking for the face off one as note for uh, those of you watching you might notice the black armbands around the sleeves of the niagara lock monsters i talked to coach garrett ball before the game and he pointed out jason mazakowski who was with the team a couple years ago tried to come back this year just couldn't do it because of his knees um, his father died this week he's still a big part of the team and the guys are wearing it in his honor and uh, to support their friend. Yeah, so our thoughts and prayers go out to Maz and his family. Maz was out there warming up the, the, this, this afternoon, actually, with yeah. the team as well. So it was great to see him back on the floor. But uh, good news mixed with the bad here today if you're a fan of the Niagara Lock Monsters. The Blizzard left to the outside. Mike Teeter, a huge pick up top. Perhaps a bit of a moving one. This one's going to be tricky in terms of Jerseys here today, the jerseys with the light blue tinge to it, the red numbering on the back is the Niagara Lock Monsters. As Captain Brad Favero comes all the way over to have a quick have word, a word with, the, with the official as he carries the ball. Favero just returning from a uh, ankle injury, so they are happy to have their captain back. With the ball now, looks over for Cody Ward and his 17 counterpart, Spencer James, takes off down the other way. A full white unis for the Barry Blizzard. There's a shot, and that one way down deep there in the shin guard of Doug Buck, and he's got his first save out of the way. And a good early test for Brad Favero as he had to hustle back on defense and certainly looks none the worse for wear. He took some time, made sure that ankle was ready to go before he returned, and looks like he's going to fit right in. And actually, as we look down at the Niagara bench, Maz is opening the front door for the Lock Monsters here today. There's a shot coming from Mark Vradenberg. That one saved by Donnelly. Goes up into the protective netting. And John Ray was about to take off, but they stop it. Andrew Tober with a fresh 30 seconds. Here come the Lock Monsters once again. <clears throat> Spread the floor a bit as Dylan Lord kept outside by Jeff Griffiths. Now sliding over to give help, Mike Maudsley. And it's on the carpet again. Latimer kicks it over. He's looking for Johnny Ray. Can't pick up. So big body of Tober back there to play for it. John Arnold out of the crowd. He shoots it into Maudsley. And Arnold, while falling, tried to get it over for Dylan Lord. Shot clock about to expire here. And Lord let, lets one go. Dylan Lord's been playing with a bit more of an edge in the past two or three couple games. And it's really ignited not only his game, but the offense of the Lock Monsters. Yeah, he's been very good, really, uh, like you said, bringing that edge, and just it's got him on his game, his shooting, his passing, everything just looks a little bit sharper. Teeter wandering around the outside, gets pushed in the corner, nice slide there by Brian Campbell. He's got help up top in the form of A.J. Masson, shoots over top of Masson. Bucking caught that one, makes the save, rebound, goes all the way outside the restraining line here. A couple of lock monsters fall over each other. And that allows Masson to pick up to Rob Koger, his shot from there. Not normally the guy you'd expect to take that shot. Rob Koger, normally a defensive specialist, but it bounces all the way up for Daryl Robertson. Blizzard are making a change here as Mitch Dumont goes after Robertson. A triple team finally draws the ball free. And that's three straight possessions for the Barry Blizzard where one guy has basically just held the ball the entire time. They have to start getting everyone involved. I mean, Caleb Weil starts it off just holding the ball and trying to go everywhere. Then Mike Teeter runs around for a while. And that one, Daryl Robertson, didn't have as much help, but they've got to get people involved. Definitely bolstering that right side with the re-addition of Caleb Wiles. But like you said, some of the lefties there and on the, uh, the left wing side, I should say, the right shooter side. As it comes up for Shane Scott, he's one of the guys over there that they 
want to get going. Pardon me, Dustin Caravello in his first game of the season. Yeah, Car Caravello returning to the team and uh, to Sealax this year. And that shot there was the best scoring opportunity they've had. And it simply came from ball movement. So uh, it's not just us harping on guys <laughs> trying to hold the ball too much. There's a shot from Justin Pitchell. Spencer James lays into him after it hit off the pipe. So Brendan Tainhouse being backed up all the way to center now and gets it off before Ray knocks him over the line. So Mike Melnichenko up for Dylan Lord who comes all the way up top. Shoots it off the back wall though and Lord tries to climb the ladder. Favero again has to go off to the races and gets there just before, pardon me, Mike Modsley and was able to get there to cause the over and back violation. Yeah, again, great hustle by the captain Favero to just take away a break chance and let the block monsters get their defensive set out. I think this is a set right now where Barry really misses Jonas Dirks, who they had <coughs> last year, and someone's picked up an interference call on Favero down in front. And it's Caleb Wiles who turns and has some words, and Brian Campbell a few extra words as he turns and gives it to Wiles, and reluctantly Caleb Wiles goes to the box, and that's been the knock on him throughout his Sealax career. Yeah, he's never been reluctant about sharing his feelings. And right there, you can see he just knocks the stick right out of Favero's hands and about 20 feet away from him. There's a shot off the uh, institution of play, and then Dylan Lord gets a couple of hits from Spencer Janes. Maybe uh, sold a little bit. Now he's hustling back on D. Oh. Shane Scott Looking almost Shane broken. Scott as Mike Teeter. What a good job to find him. Scott was the man that replaced James. Oh. And look here. No, Shane Scott in the crease. Joel Furman right on the doorstep as Teeter gets one taken away. A beautiful play by the Blizzard, but the toes just a little too long for Shane Scott there. Oh, great work by Shane Scott, though, with players all over him to get that ball over to Teeter when it looked like all hope was lost on that set. Sarter for Fowler. They go down low again looking for Vradenberg. It's out of his reach, so Fowler chases it down. Fowler, our player to watch, Devin Sarter. Back for Fowler, there's a shot, Dinley the save, and Fowler walks all the way from the top down to the crease to pick up his own rebound before Vradenberg accepts the pass and Daryl Robertson takes him out. Dylan Lord, from the outside, a sidearm shot, Tainhouse gets the stick up in the face of Cogard. No call coming there as Dinley makes the save and the ball bounces harmlessly into the Lock Monster bench. Looks like it's gonna be Barry Ball, they'll take it at center floor. Yeah, it went off the stick of Dylan Lord who turned, tried to intercept the pass, just didn't quite catch it. And uh, you can see him just looking up thinking, oh, I should have got that one. But at least he broke up again, the fast break chance for Barry going for the outlet for uh, Jeff Griffith. Cam Monroe there went streaking to the net, bounced off a couple players and bucking had to make the save, so here come the Lock Monsters again. They're in the set. Fowler for Tober. Tober Favero, that one off the shoulder of Dinley. And Corey Fowler, this is the second offensive unit. He plays first and second. Looks like it's going to be today. That's Favero out there as well. A whack from Favero on Spencer Janes, who comes wheeling down the near side. He's going to go for goal and steps in the crease. Two now taken away from the blizzard. Penalty about to expire, so Caleb Wiles will step on the floor and head over to the Barry bench. And as the ball approaches, I mean, mm -hmm. Alex to apply some forecheck. Caleb Wiles going to stay out there on defense. Looks like is Gat and Tompkinson. That's a huge collision right in front of us. As Tompkinson picks it up, three on two rush here as Gat's the trailer. They've got Wiles on his wrong side. He's going to chase the ball down though. Nice little pick up there after the reset from the shot clock. Shot from outside for Wiles. Radenberg plays the ricochet off the glass and Wiles goes after the Lucy again. And now finally Wiles is gonna head to the bench and take his change. Niagara's really been giving up more opportunities on goal than they want to at this point. Oh, oh. Malnachenko, individual effort came from the restraining line, came down the near boards, cut back in, faked out two different defenders before finally 
the Dipsy Doodle on Angus Dinley, and we're just outside the official's timeout. That's the best one of the game so far. And definitely the highlight of Mike Melnichenko's brief Sealax career so far. You're going to see right here that he just comes one, and gets it, like two, you said, around three, one. Four. <laughs> Just goes up and over Angus Dinley, and it's important, I think, for Niagara to start putting some balls in and uh, at least start finding some good at chances. And uh, Melnichenko really created that one largely by himself. And again, a stalemate at the draw. Gillen and Cody Ward on the other side. Okay. I think. Ward spun all the way around to his left, but the stick is still tied up there. And now, drug out by Mike Gillen as that one took some effort. Zach Tompkinson up top. There's a Blizzard player knocked off his feet in front. And A.J. Masson goes after Brian Campbell who gives him a whack. Now Campbell gets dumped again. They're letting this one go on as Justin Pitchell all over Masson. Masson goes after Pitchell as does Teeter and it's in the back of the net. There was a delayed penalty coming to Niagara. It will be canceled by this sharp outside shot. And the conversation continues down there. As it looked like finally it came from Mike Gillen, who was involved in that scrum and then the shot from the far side. Archer managed how he had a whole lot left to shoot with after that battle for the loose ball, but this is just a simple outside shot where he gets Bucking going to his right, draws it back, tucks it just inside the post. And now Gillen and Dustin Gatt go for the faceoff, Gat went to switch his stick just as the whistle went. So Gillen got an easy one there, but as he drew it back, it was stolen away by the Lock Monsters. Here comes Sarter, looks for Mitch Dumont. He's playing the top spot here. Fowler and Gat in front, stirring up trouble. Coger on the far side, Fowler goes to pick on him. Those are two big bodies, Brendan Tainhouse and Rob Coger doing battle as Fowler shoots it off the pipe in behind Dinley. Sarter up for Dumont again. For Tainhouse, he hits the bar. About eight inches above where Fowler just hit it moments earlier. Tainhouse is gonna head off here as Sarter's got it near side. Defender runs into a pick, Gat heads out. Sarter passes off for Dylan Lord. Lord with the shot, Dinley goes down to make the save, it rolls Back behind the net, and Daryl Robertson gets it. Ducks under the check of Dylan Lord and heads up over half. Robertson gives for Mike Teeter. Teeter's got Griffiths on his right, so he passes off. The late change is Cam Monroe. Shane Scott near side. You can see the Lock Monsters know this is where he wants to shoot from. He does get one away. Nice job opening up space there by a Caravello. And Bucket all over that though. Dustin Caravello, Shane Scott. Some experience together in Brampton, I believe. So you know Caravello <coughs> knows that play that he was looking for. Trying to find Lock Monsters, trying to find Dylan Lord. And we've got a whistle, an interference call. Looks like coming against Dylan Lord will take us to the official's timeout. And we'll send it to a quick, quick break, and we'll be right back after this.
There's a look at Brad MacArthur, his first full season as the head coach of the Barry Blizzard. There they start with the ball here outside of the timeout. And they'll put Caleb Wiles up top. That's his power play move that he's looking for. Wiles takes the shot and Buckins has been seeing the outside shot so far here today, saving everything as Wiles intercepts the pass. They were looking at spring Connor Daly. And Daly up the floor, but Buckin just kind of lobbed it up there. Caleb Wiles, as soon as he took that shot and saw that it was stopped by Buckin, immediately retreated and was in perfect position to pick that one off. Here's Wiles to Shane Scott in the corner for Caravello as they work the horn. Trying to feed it through. Looking quickly they were for Maudsley. He couldn't find the quick stick, so it turns into an opportunity for Niagara. Campbell's going to keep. And Brian Campbell, the shot, Dinely, and it dropped to his knees to make the save but he does get it up for Maudsley. Good effort by Campbell, nice hustle. He saw he had Daly with him, kept <clears> looking across. When he realized the uh, passing lane was being taken, he just put his head down and sprinted because he knew he could get to the net and get that shot off. Maudsley back again. He looks up top for Teeter. Teeter faked the pass, takes the shot. Shot clock under 10 now as that one goes high over top of Bucking. Shane Scott takes the shot here, took a little bit off it, and you can see the arm pop up to make the save. Oh, oh, looking for the wrap check there was Zach Tompkinson. It came, missed everything except the face mask of Campbell and the arm goes up of both officials, it looked like. And his one arm's now gone down, bucking to the bench. Brian Campbell down there as well. Ten, 10 on the shot clock, though, is John Arnold still hanging on. No one picks up Melnichenko. Now they double team him as Maudsley finally, finally touches, sorry, and Tompkinson going to head off for what I expect is going to be a high stick. They actually called a slash. And here it Which is coming close. right at you. Yeah. Either way. I mean, it is a slash, I guess. I would have I would said high stick too, but either way, they got the call right. And uh, Tomkinson knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did it. And Brian Campbell showed some nice restraint as he walked past Tomkinson as they were setting up the extra man and didn't... Uh, you know, didn't do anything. He just he knew the penalty was coming. He just was content to take that and let his team go to the four on four for 10 seconds and 12 seconds and then onto the power play. Jeff Griffiths, the assistant captain, Brad Favero, the captain of the Lock Monsters, came over to the official and had a word during that break. And now the penalty expires to Dylan Lord. So power play here for the Lock Monsters. Meanwhile, back the other way, Spencer James. Had a word with John Watson. There's Vradenberg taking the shot. Looked like it was offline, but Dinely makes the save anyways. Resets the shot clock. And Fowler getting around Rob Coger. Sarder and Fowler play catch up top here. Tainhouse sets a pick in front as they continue to pass it around, keep it outside. Fowler, the shot goes wide off the glass. Dale Robertson into play for it. Vradenberg's going to try and chase him out of the zone. Now Fowler takes up the fray. And John Arnold is bowled over. Pardon me. It is Devin Sarter. And they keep it in the middle zone. Five seconds. And nobody's called it. Now they finally do. Yeah. Took the Lock Monster screaming to get that call. Nice job by Devin Sarter. Kind of sacrificing his body to run hard into Johnny Ray. Or into Daryl Robertson who's uh, a real load when he's carrying that ball. There's Tane House, Fowler, Sarter again. Those were the three guys that caused the turnover. We'll see if they get a goal out of it. And they do. Sarter shoots it into the stick of Griffiths. That takes just enough off the ball, it looked like, to confuse Dinely, and it gets behind him. Yeah, you picked Devin Sarter as the player to watch today. And nice job, because he is looking sharp already as he uh, gets this goal to contribute to an early lead for Niagara. And it's really just going to be some great ball moving again by the Lock Monsters to create open spaces. They're going to both sides, and then Tainhouse will just get it back to him. As you can see, Griffiths gets the stick there, but it's a little bit too late. The brunt of the shot has already come through. Did change it probably, as you said, just enough. Kept it you know, nice and high, but uh, perfect spot by Sarter. And they go up 2-1. to one. Blizzard win the ensuing faceoff here. And they'll try and answer back. Outside for Wiles. They get it down into the corner, going to the net, falling was Bucket, and now there's a conversation in behind him as the net came off and a couple of players were 
in there as well. Favero picks it up quick. Back the other way though, Favero, Tober, Lord, and the goal. What better way to answer somebody running in by your goaltender than to score immediately at the other end. Nice ball movement by the Lock Monsters. Nice restraint by Kevin Sullivan, who was the guy who went after the player had gone into the crease. And uh, just, I think it was AJ Masson who landed in the crease. And they just made the smart decision to go up and play lacrosse. And they get the goal. We're a little behind it there. That's how quick the movement up the floor was for the Niagara Lock Monsters. And just like that, they're up 3-1. to one. It was Favero who took off on the near side. And they found Andrew Tober. No one picked up Dylan Lord down on the crease. And a number of goals. Lord scores from down there. Although in this stretch where he's been the best, one of the best offensive players for them, this ball is going to be tipped. So no over and back call as Caravello goes to get it. Dylan Lord's also shown some shooting chops. Caravello passes off. Teeter with the shot and it was right over the top. And looked like it may have fooled Buck in a bit, but he does get the left arm in the way. And this is the result. A pile up in the corner looking for the rebound. Barry controls and will hang on. They go Spencer James at the restraining line inside one minute to play in the opening quarter. Ball still on the outside as there's a bit of movement in front. Janes with a huge pick. That one opening up the lane for Mike Gillen. It goes off the crossbar all the way back down where Dinley's got to play for it. And a fresh 30 will almost kill off the entire quarter except for three seconds, but Barry's lost the ball here as it falls out of the stick of Maudsley. And Dylan Lord's got to go pick it up. Lord for Tober, they've got 14 seconds to do something here. Tober all alone in front, Mitch Dumont the shot. And it's tied up underneath Dinley and it squirted free as a couple lock monsters went for it. Dinley down the floor, there's two seconds. Can they do anything with it? No, as Wiles dives for it. And that'll do it for the opening quarter. A 3-1 lead for the home side. We'll take a break as the teams will switch sides and reset. The second quarter comes your way next. identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We developed customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com. Fire Monitoring of Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com. Back inside the Meridian Center here in St. Catharines. Let us know who you think the three stars of the game should be as this one goes on. At JVI Video, use the hashtag 
three stars. And it is a big one, as we said, for the Barry Blizzard and the Niagara Lock Monsters. No one really stealing the show so far. Good quarter for Doug Buckton, I would think, as he had to make some pretty good saves, as did Angus Dinley in 10-second violation against Whoever Barry. they deemed to have the ball. Yeah, Barry here. I didn't yeah. think anybody had the ball, but yeah. it got tied up right in front of the exit door for the Lock Monsters, and they did say that Barry controlled the faceoff, so Fowler, a nice job to throw the pick there and open some space. Of course, with two wins on the season, Niagara, two more to play against Barry, can work their way up into what would be a tie for first place with Southwest, assuming they lose their next game. As there's an outside shot, Rob Coger getting it in. Oh, pardon me, not Coger. It was Favero getting the shot and Dinely the save. And what a second save on Mike Melnichenko trying to replicate his first goal from earlier today. You're going to have to do a lot to beat uh, Melnichenko, though. That one was pretty. That was lovely. Delayed penalty coming here as Wiles works to the net. The shot and Bucking with another save. And Is that a charge? That Justin Pitchell in disbelief. Interference. <laughs> 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 that was a great shot. Actually, we didn't have it on camera, but Justin Pitchell looked at referee John Watson and, and uh, explained what he thought the uh, the correct interpretation should have been, and Watson just smiled and shook his head. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> of course, one of the more veteran officials in the province, John Watson, three years ago refed his 2,000th game. He's got to be up to, what, 8,000 by now? <laughs> He does referee a lot. That pass doesn't quite connect. Buckin though, looking down the floor, trying to lead Connor Daly. It's hard to lead Connor Daly by too much with his speed, but Buckin managed it. Here's Shane Scott looking for an opening, the shot and the goal. That's his favorite spot on the floor, as we've talked about before. He loves being in that high shooter, sp shooter position. And he just rips that one home. They've even put a piece of tape on the carpet for That's him, right. too. Look at that. So he knows exactly where to go. <laughs> it's been that way for years. This season, we've seen him mix it up a little bit, though. But he goes back to old faithful here, as we're going to see on the replay. And don't think that his teammates don't know. They get it to him, and he's literally not far from that piece of tape <laughs> on the floor. And uh, Scott just firing. He is one of the deadliest shooters in this league when he gets time as we saw last week when he got a couple of huge goals for them against the Southwest Cyclops. Clean face off win here for Niagara diving through that was Cody Ward and Donnelly went with him made the save and Barry getting the counter attack one goal lead for the Niagara at this point as Justin Pitchell Mike Gillen and last man on the scene Ross Smith former member of the Lock Monsters, part of that trade that sent AJ or AJ Masson came over to Barry. Travis Gibbons as well. And there's a shot from Teeter that gets in behind Buckin. And something about this net working off this near side today. Yeah, it's really working for the shooters. That's a nice little play by Teeter, who has been who's taken a few shots today where he's been outside and just putting everything into it, just absolutely trying to let it rip. In this case, it worked for him to actually not shoot it quite as hard, but just find the perfect spot and the perfect time. Look at the seam open up right here. A bit of help. Looks like from Mike Gillen. And a couple defenders with nowhere to go as Tompkinson scoops that face off off the carpet. And Gillen, he goes one-on-one -on -one with Tainhouse, gets through, takes the shot, and that one off the toe of Buckin. Rebound right to Fowler, though. And just like that, we're tied up three apiece. As Mitch Dumont. Normally a defensive specialist. He's had a couple offensive ch chances today. Has Dumont. As here's Mitch Dumont in the corner for Corey Fowler. Big pick there from Tainhouse. And a nice job to recognize and strip by Shane Scott. Niagara retains possession, though, as Sarter walks off the far side. He spots Tainhouse streaking in. Couldn't get it to him in time, though, as shot clock's going to expire here. Donnelly's got to get back in the cage, though. And wheeling around, 
Fowler couldn't release in time. Nervous moment there for Dinley. Almost had to pull out his best Tyler Richards impression. <laughs> Richards joining an elite club last night with a National Lacrosse League goalie goal. Caravello with another good chance as that ball landed on the carpet. No one picked it up. Went down, took the shot. Rebound went right to Niagara, though. So John Arnold chasing it down and loses it at the restraining line. Mike Teeter will come back the other way. Bradenberg directing the off the defense rather as Caravello's got it again in the corner. Here is Vradenberg, and Caravello rolls it to Tomkinson. Passes off for Teeter. Teeter to Caravello, who's rolled all the way to the top, and Cam Monroe has that pop out of his stick. Dylan Lord running down the near side. Vradenberg joins him. Maudsley off the bench. Pardon me, Melnichenko, rather, as Tober goes after the loose ball. That turned into a three-on-one quite quickly, and Melnichenko again going to the net. And again, missing the pass. This time, Spencer Janes breaks it up as Janes is working over. I believe that's Mark Vradenberg in behind the net. It is, and Janes just pinning him against the boards so that Vradenberg couldn't get anything going before the 30-second shot clock expired. Nice veteran play by Janes, but uh, Dylan Lord electing to shoot, looking off Melnichenko as he came in and just wired it over the top of the post there. Latimer, far side. Shane Scott comes around the top, shoots it into the corner. Teeter's there waiting. Teeter gets around Cody Ward. Maudsley trying to create some space for him. A nice slide there by Kevin Sullivan. The shot skips off the front of Buckin and up into the screening. So Latimer gets it again down low. The blizzard where it went off for a change. Niagara didn't realize it. There's still only four Blizzard players out there. As Wiles on his wrong side is going to set up behind the net. Wiles finds Caravello cutting. Caravello realized he was out of room, so just hung on. And now Wiles will cut back. Lane was closed off by Tober. So Wiles, one-on-one, -on -one beats Lord, gets the shot, looking five-hole on Bucking, and again, closes that up as we pass nine and a half to play as the stick gets ripped out of the hands of Caleb Wiles with no call. Here comes Tober. Tober for Tainhouse. Tainhouse, Fowler. Corey Fowler puts the brakes on, moves back, takes the shot off the pipe in behind Donnelly. Rebound rolls all the way outside the restraining line and just taking the floor there in time, Devin Sarter. Fowler, Sarter. Back for Fowler again as he spins away. Triple team now as he falls to the floor. He's lost the ball and there's a scrum. Who's gonna come away with it? It will be Barry. And over the top, Fowler there in time to get the ball away from Tompkinson. Tompkinson goes right back staring down Fowler. Ross Smith, the starter to Dumont to Fowler again. Fowler with Tainhouse, opening space. Oh. Tainhouse, what a pickup. There, that pass was nowhere near him. Threw the stick head out, caught it. And here's Shane Scott, and they're going to say that someone moved early on the bench of Barry. They're going to say it was Shane Scott coming, <laughs> coming out of the bench before anybody got in to release him. Just a bit too eager to jump into the offensive play. That was a great catch by Brendan Tainhouse. And I'll tell you, one thing we're seeing down in the Niagara end um, when they're playing defense, they have a lot of faith in their defensive system, in their five-man units to play as a team and limit opportunities. But Caleb Wiles is the type of individual player who can create such chances for himself and for his teammates that it can really break down that defensive concept. And they're going to have to be uh, pretty careful about that. Niagara will go after the defenders of Barry here, though, as Dylan Lord will hang on. Substitution call against the Barry Blizzard as Tainhouse drops Griffiths and Spencer Janes takes exception. This would be a heavyweight tilt if I ever saw one. Spencer Janes and Brendan Tainhouse getting in each other's face. Now Dylan Lord goes over. And they've got to pull Lord out of the pile and looks like Janes and Tainhouse are going to take seats here. Yeah, so Tainhouse taking the initial penalty for 
after, as you mentioned, absolutely burying Jeff Griffiths into the turf. And then Spencer Janes coming to his aid. Here's the initial push by Tainhouse, and Janes is right after him, getting in his face. We'll see if Tainhouse winds up with the extra two. Doesn't look like it, it looks like just two apiece. So we will go to four on three action. Well, the clock only has two up on the side of Spencer Janes, not sure. Oh no, it is two apiece because the other 18 is in the box for the, yeah. is the initial substitution penalty, so 141. There is Brad MacArthur, as we said before. Three and two this season, and a decent season in his first full season. He came over, as did Angus Dinley, about the same time, and a whole bunch of other player changes last year. And Matt Atwood on the other side, a long time face on the bench of the Niagara Lock Monsters, but his first season as the head coach. Creators. Lock Monsters, obviously, as we said, having the winning the Creators Cup last year, everything looked so solid for them coming back with a real core of players. It just took them a while to gel, but uh, they seem to be hitting their stride. Is it in time? Speaking about hitting their stride, here goes Mitch Dumont in stride. His corkscrew shot and gets in behind Donnelly, falling there. John Ray collided heavily with the net. Gets up looking no worse for the wear, however, as Dinley feeds him the ball. Over center, Dumont attacks him. Arnold as well, Ray splits those two. As the blizzard here, killing off the penalty in penalty shot territory with two men in the box. As John Arnold gets it down for Fevero, he steps into a shot and fires it high over top. Here's Rob Koger. Heading in the restart right in front of Doug Buckin. <laughs> and A.J. Masson, as Koger was the first one there, maybe shouldn't have been blown dead, but A.J. Masson getting worked over here as Favero and Melnichenko were on him. As the ball squirts free, the pile breaks up, and Buckin springs Melnichenko. Dylan Lord with 25 to go in his power play. Sets up his office right on the side of the crease there. Cody Ward again behind the back of Bra Vradenberg. Dylan Lord one-on-one -on -one with Dinley. Couldn't get the quick stick away, and Lord's still in the crease here as he goes in to collide on the loose ball battle with Melnichenko and a Barry player. Here's Dinley, the bench. Wanted a back-in call, it sounded like, as Griffiths loses that one, and Vradenberg is going to streak down the far side. We're all even for a side now. As there's 12 seconds remaining in the offsetting minors of Spencer Janes, Brendan Tainhouse. Here's Dylan Lord feeding through far side. And Vradenberg, his quick stick, a nice job by Dinley to go over to his left. And good awareness by Koger, shooting it to the front door. And Caleb Wiles very careful not to come out early as they realize they do have someone watching the changes and will catch them if they uh, jump a couple of steps before they should. They were close a couple times before that call and Rance Vigneault there on the outdoor. He had to almost bear hug a couple of players I saw a few times and I guess Shane Scott got away from that on the too many men call, but no harm, no foul. There's Fowler with the shot and Dinley the save. Not a bad decision by Fowler as things opened up for him. Just didn't get that anywhere near where he was aiming for. Here's Caravello. Pass intended for Gillen. Tainhouse fills him in anyways. As it goes back for Latimer. Latimer still had Tainhouse on him, so pass to the far side for Tompkinson. And a moving pick in front will bring us a number of whistles and our officials time out here in the second. Five minutes to play before halftime. Nothing decided yet.
Here's my partner, Stephen Stamp, hard at work last week here in the Meridian Center. Our thanks to everyone involved with the Canadian Lacrosse League and the Roland Systems Group. Visit rolandsystemsgroup.com, canadianlacrosse.com, and jvisportsnetwork.com. If you'd like your event covered, contact us, and we'll send Stephen Stamp out to work in fast motion. I'm much quicker than I look. That was impressive, man. Thank you. Wow. Corey Fowler down in the corner as we're back underway. On the floor, outside shot. Donnelly gets there, makes the save. We are even strength, five aside. We'll try and do that for the final five minutes here before halftime. Three goals aside as well in this all-important playoff battle. Doug Buckin went out to intercept that ball. Caused enough for a jump ball in the... Longer stick of the goaltender won that battle. It's interesting that Barry, really a team that tends to slow things down a bit, try and get the game at their pace, whereas Niagara likes to keep it moving, keep the up and down the floor. But Barry really looking for the outlet chances this game, trying to get some transition going. That slowness started last year with Jonas Dirks and really the addition of all these youngsters, Dustin Caravello, Caleb Wiles, great players, but you can see that energy being inserted into the lineup and sometimes a little bit of maybe too excited as they try and get things going. Mike Teeter, another one of those youngsters. As is Connor Latimer, who's down there. Caravello here, Shane Scott from that same spot. This time it just misses off the back wall. And Kevin Sullivan, he's got Cody Ward behind everybody and that one just over his head as Sullivan's got to chase it down. Pretty nice job by Shane Scott hustling back and getting in the passing lane, making that a more difficult pass than it may have looked like. Dylan Lord, he finds Connor Daly, who this week has the name plate on the back. Be happy to put that one there, set in stone. He'll be with them the rest of the season as, oh, Raidenberg the shot, and it just trickles through the legs of Donnelly, and Donnelly's going to go for a bit of a stroll here. Yeah, he just gets the helmet back and takes a look up. A little disappointed in himself that Vradenberg was able to sneak that one through him. A little cross-hander that Vradenberg throws at him here. He wants another look, so here it comes. He's got his hands crossed right over, you can see, as he gets checked. Just does a really great job protecting his stick and the ball from the defensive player and, and still managing to get enough on it to get it behind Dinelli. Gillen falls there off the draw. Brian Campbell basically sat on him, so somehow. And then got up and complained that the call wasn't going <laughs> his way. Somehow Barry still managed to get that one, but after it all shakes out, it's Niagara bearing down on Dinley again. As Donnelly comes out of the crease, it's Vradenberg again on the spot. And that shot, Spencer James drills Vradenberg. He's slow to get up, and James is doubled over in the crease. Pardon me, Johnny Ray now. As he stands upright, and he's going to jog slowly off the floor here. That collision in front of the net nearly took out two players. Here's Wiles, though. Back the other way as the replacement comes on. And Wiles, one-on-one -on -one with John Arnold. Arnold wins that battle, so he goes for the cutter. Mike Teeter, Vradenberg had the stick up around the neck, it looked like, and Teeter's arguing all the way to the bench. Here's Dylan Lord, finds a trailer, who's Arnold, the shot. Donnelly the first save, Fowler with the rebound, and it's picked up after it popped out of his stick, all the way up for Griffiths. That was Daryl Robertson finding him, Robertson straight to the net, and Shane Scott ha can't handle the pass, and again, Bucking comes out of his crease to play on the ball. Bucking up for Dylan Lord, just outside the restraining line. Griffiths chasing him down. Lord shoots it high off the back glass. Dumont is there. Lord at the end of his shift, looked like he just didn't want to have to wait for the rest of the offense to switch <laughs> up. So he just ripped that shot, and it happened to come across to Sarter. Here's Tainhouse. His shot came all the way back up top again as... There's a player in front, dropped Corey Fowler. Spencer James really throwing his weight around today with that big hit there. That rumble with Tainhouse fired him up and they collide again. Pardon me, it's Fowler, 
and Griffiths, a pair of 16s that get tangled up in the crease. And James and Tainhouse were standing outside to see if there was going to be anything else come of it. What does come of it is an offensive possession for the Lock Monsters as we're about to hit the final minute mark of the opening half. Pretty good one for the defenses at this point. Barry does play a lot of low scoring games for both sides. A lot of that in part to Angus Dinley and their defense. They are definitely both defense first teams. I mean, Niagara, you can think of as a pretty high scoring team, but their offense really does flow from their defensive approach. As Fowler gets it over for Devin Sarter. Of course, Corey Fowler named transition player of the week last week. And Sarter ducks it through, looking five hole on Donnelly. He closes that up. Shane Scott in behind everyone. Tainhouse giving chase, though, as Scott had to wait. And just in front of the line, a bit of a hop to take him over top of the crease and shoots it over Bucking before landing. That's a good goal. And it ties things up here 20 seconds away from break. Shane Scott, who has some good speed, didn't really have to use it here as he had to just wait for the ball to get to him. The pass tossed up ahead. Here's another twister from Vradenberg as he gets flattened as he's taking that shot. Now here comes the play. The ball coming up ahead. You can see Scott had to turn around to wait, but enough moves. Oh, that was close. His toes just dancing along the edge of the line, but he stays out and gets the goal to put the Barry Blizzard back up even. Face-off win there, picked up by A.J. Masson and an immediate timeout call from the Barry Blizzard, and they'll crowd around Brad MacArthur, who's got the clipboard. We'll see what this play is. 12.5 they'll have to work with to see if they can break the deadlock, sitting four goals aside here, low-scoring affair for the opening period. But, you know, that's about the way that I know Brad MacArthur likes to, to keep the scoring down play solid defense, let their offense flow from the transition game and uh, and you know let his offensive guys do their thing as well. And Matt Atwood, a very similar approach that uh, Niagara has held you know, back when Jeff Dowling was coaching as well, where he likes his team to play defense first and really focus on keeping the ball out of their own net. So it's not too surprising, both teams a bit low. Late in the periods, Goals scored can have such an impact on the momentum of a game. So Barry getting that one from Shane Scott on the nice pass up by Mike Modgley to recognize he just had to get it up and let Scott do the work, just get rid of it quickly. Um, with 20 seconds left, that'll give them some momentum to get the face off and have a chance to go down and try and get another one. Could really start to turn things Barry's way towards the end of this first half. It was Ross Smith who ran across the floor, came off the bench to make sure the official got the assist for Modsley. Who passed that one up for Shane Scott. And the clock during the timeout ticked down from 12.5 up to uh, 6.1. And now they've put it back. But they have fixed it. That is some home floor officiating. Right there. <laughs> home floor timekeeping. Yeah, can't get that one past the bench though. As Dinley is on the bench and here comes the play. They work it to Wiles. Spencer Jane throws a pick. Teeter bats it back for Scott. Scott with Campbell on him. He can't get close enough to take the shot. And we remain a 4-4 deadlock after 30 minutes of play. As we said, two teams that are pretty defensively minded, but you got to give credit to Angus Donnelly and Doug Bucket in that first half. We'll see what they can do on the way back out. 15 minutes for halftime. The Daredevil Lacrosse Club from here in St. Catharines will be the halftime entertainment. We'll enjoy that and we'll be back in about 15 minutes time. Learning College has identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We develop customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com.
Fire Monitoring of Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com.
Our thanks to the seven on seven stylings of Daredevil Lacrosse from. That was seven on five. Seven on five. The Whites only had five. The Blues had seven out there. That's not fair. I know. Any of them going to make your three stars list? Let us know at JVI Video. Hashtag three stars as we continue to look for your favorites from this game right here. 4-4 four, four score after three periods of play. Nobody. Shane Scott with two goals. Yeah. I was going to say nobody with multiple goals. Dylan Lord a goal and an assist, but really nobody running away with it. I think both goaltenders have done a pretty nice job, and then you got to look at some of the defensive guys. So we'll definitely need your input here this afternoon as Gillen and Cody Ward do battle at the faceoff circle. It was won by Ward all the way down into the corner. Doug Buck Bucket controls the net to our right. Dinley remains in the net to our left. And Shane Scott sidesteps his way in the neutral zone out over the top. Scott for Wiles. Pick comes from A.J. Mass and Wiles looks off him and then well, looked like he was going to dive there but just a bit of a hop. He cut back the other way, took the shot and ended up off the pipe. Lock Monsters control the rebound and is Mitch Dumont. Niagara had Dumont and John Arnold, two of their top defensive, steadiest defenders out there. And uh, still, Wiles able to create that space. Mitch Dumont, what is it, 41 games now, the Sealax Ironman, after Brad Favero and Mark Farthing were out in the same week. Favero, a nice job to bat that one back just out of the way of the first player back. It ended up being a three on one, but that created just the extra three seconds needed to get the extra defenders back. Spencer James taking an offensive shift now as he works with Dustin Caravello up top for Teeter. Latimer open space in front and it goes through Bucking as Mike Teeter sidestepped his way over the front. The pick in front of him came from Connor Latimer. There's Mike Teeter leading the point team in points and ninth in the league in goals. He's got an extra one there. Well, he's got a couple today to get him up to double digits for the season, and he's just going to skip this one off the turf. Again, not, uh, you know, he's big shots. His earlier goal, not necessarily the hardest shot. This is one from way downtown. You can see his back foot almost at the training line, and uh, I thought it came through a screen, but it looked like Buckin actually had a pre pretty good view of that and would probably want another go at it. So as we saw yesterday, a week one on both sides of the floor now as Dangle, Dinley rather, once saw one that he wanted back. Here's Wiles the shot into the midsection of Buckin. And Buckin sends it down the floor to the open door. That's where Mark Vradenberg pops out. They did have Daryl Robertson back, but it looked like if Vradenberg could have hung on there, he may have beat him around the corner. Well, and he had Dylan Lord up there with him, so he would have had a, an option as well. That was Lord looking up for Andrew Tober as Tober gets it back into the corner. Five on the shot clock now. Tober's got to hurry. He takes a sidearm one, skips in front of Dinley off the back glass. It's going to come to center and flipped over the shoulder by John Arnold as the shot clock expires. So Arnold, Tober, and Dylan Lord set up their defense, get a couple, a few gasps of wind in them, and Daryl Robertson restarts up for Caleb Wiles. Niagara loves that breakout pass to the guy coming off the bench. Doug Bucken has to work on it, but he doesn't quite have the panache that Connor Danko has on that pass yet. Man, two weeks ago, that was something pretty. Gorgeous. And an over and back call against Barry, Dylan Lord. A quick restart. They want him to start at the restraining line, but the bench is saying Barry got a restart right in front of our crease last, yeah. last quarter. So Corey Fowler does restart, gets it far side for starter. Dumont, Tainhouse now. He shoots sidearm, falling in front of that was Wiles. And Fowler and Tainhouse both having words for Wiles. And the conversation continues here as Tainhouse goes on Wiles again. Ball in the corner though for Dustin Gadd as it's returned down from the far end of the floor by D Doug Bucken. Here's Mitch Dumont. Shooting it into the defender. Tried to flip it past Cam Monroe. Can't do that. As Monroe picks up and the offensive Barry will take to the floor. 
as it's Jeff Griffiths working over half. Mike Teeter off the bench. One on one on the near side with Fowler dives through. It's in the back of the net, but they call no, no goal in the crease. Heck of an effort by Mike Teeter, but it did look live like he stepped on the line. Not by much, but it looked like by enough. And now we have a player down on the yeah, floor. Tainhouse ran through whoever that is, Zach Tompkinson, it looks like. And he was flat on his back, and he's still trying to get up. And Tainhouse arguing the call, but John Watson again shaking his head, not smiling this time. An interference call and a slam of the door from Tim House as well. He wants the officials to relook, but this is the crease call, and that's a good call from Joel Furman from the far side. And keep your eye in the middle of the crease. Yeah, just oh. stepping up to lay the shoulder into the midsection there of Tompkinson. That was a big hit by Brendan Tainhouse. He'll sit for two or less because of it. His team already trailing five to four thanks to the early goal here in the third quarter by Mike Teeter. That's just the 120 mark of this third quarter. Here's Maudsley for Wiles. They get it to Shane Scott. He winds and fires. That's off a stick in front, goes to the corner. So Teeter again. Wiles looks shot, takes it. It's in Buckin got the shoulder pads on it, dropped it in front, had to reach the stick out to corral the rebound, he does so and gets it for Brian Campbell. Penalty kill mode now for the defensive-minded Niagara Lock Monsters as we've been talking about all game. And the over and back moves to the restraining line now, so Dumont will take some steps to his left to try and get away from there. Being double teamed though. And somebody's chin strap has come undone. It is Dumont, so play stops and ball handed over to the Blizzard. And Mike Modsley very alertly alerting the officials to the fact that that chin strap was undone. <coughs> Wiles takes a chop there from Tober. Ball worked into the corner. Shane Scott and Caravello on that side. Modsley up top. Now Teeter comes up top. The shot comes from Scott, though. You can hear Bucken what was behind it. it as that one bounced off of Bucken, but the pass just a little bit too far up for Daly. Again, the second time at the speedster, Connor Daly can't catch up. Wiles and Maudsley again. We'll call this the red shoe line as Teeter out there as well. Caleb Wiles, the only guy missing the red kicks. He comes back out of the reach of Shane Scott, out of the reach of Teeter, and that should be over and back. And it definitely is, although the oh. Barry, Barry Bench doesn't like it. That play not executed, and another over and back as it passes the restraining line. Jeff Griffiths all over that call. And Kevin Sullivan had a glorious opportunity. The pass coming on the reset out of the corner, and I think he just took his eyes off it as he was seeing nothing but net in front of him and getting a little overexcited about his chance. Of course, Kevin Sullivan, the hero last year. Here's Teeter off the pipe, off the back of Buckin, and it finds its way into the mesh. And not much Doug Buckin can do about that one. I'll tell you, you've got to attribute some of the success that Teeter and Shane Scott are having to the return of Caleb Wiles because he's such a dangerous force. It gives them another shooter. All three of these guys are very dangerous shooters, Teeter, Scott, and, of course, Caleb Wiles. And Teeter making the most of it here as he gets his... Second of the game, almost would have been three with the last one where he just stepped on the line, but you can see from the outside, just rips that one. Teeter scores a lot of goals from the outside as well, going back to last year when he started in the league, two years ago, rather. And that actually is three for Teeter. Of course, because he did get the last one for them after uh, scoring the goal earlier. Fowler in the corner, we'll see what they can do to answer. Tainhouse off the left arm. And Rob Koger asking Tainhouse to answer for dropping Tompkinson. So far, he's not willing to do so as Fowler gets the ball back. Koger and Tainhouse continue to exchange words as Gillen slides over to drop Fowler. Ball up top for Dumont, though. Koger slides over on Fowler. There's a size mismatch for you. As Fowler gets it up for Dustin Gatt. He's hit as he gets the shot away. The save from Dimely and a penalty coming. 
Donnelly's going to beat three of his line mates <laughs> to the bench here as he also runs over Tainhouse. Yeah, gives him a shove to get out of his way as Donnelly with mad speed getting to the bench with that goalie gear on. That's not easy to do. He saw the high stick and he turned to make sure the arm was up before breaking full sprint. And finally, as it's touched up by Niagara, Dustin Gatt will take the jog off. Yeah, not much question about that one. He just got right up into the grill. Yeah, let's make an official with the replay. Shot and then gets right, right up against the helmet and face And mask. there goes Dinely. <laughs> so Barry back to the power play with a six to four lead. And Niagara not at this point playing like a team who recognizes that their playoff lives are pretty much on the line here. Scott ducks under a check, a ton of shooting space for Maudsley. Scott gets it again, rings it off the iron, and that one's gonna go the length of the floor. Maudsley had a glorious chance, shot it into the defender, and Justin Pitchell in front of us shoves Teeter to the ground. Teeter's got it now, down low. Maudsley up top, Caleb Wiles. He takes a shot into the Lock Monster logo on Buckins' chest, Pitchell. Has that stolen away from him, and Maudsley gets it. Driven into the corner, Caravello keeps the defender there. Shane Scott up top. As they work back for Wiles again, and just calming things down, he'll go over his shoulder for Teeter. Wiles again oh. with the shot, and this one through everything. And almost a look of relief for Caleb Wiles, <laughs> as he has been taking some shots today. He is normally such a good shooter, but just wasn't finding his range so far in the game. He's been hitting Doug Buckin in the chest a lot, in the stomach, just really not getting the spots he wants. And he dialed in on that one and just nailed the spot he was aiming for. And if you're on the Lock Monster bench, watch out now, because once the first one gets in for Wiles, we saw in their semifinal game, it was five following that in quick succession. Right about this point in the game, too. Ross Smith over to Zach Tompkinson after Barry wins the faceoff. Tober goes after Tompkinson for Mike Gillen. Gillen falls with John Arnold on him. Arnold stripping that away. Tompkinson there on the spot to pick up the loose ball. Tompkinson, Campbell, we've got a delayed penalty coming here to the Lock Monsters as Arnold touches up. And I think it's... Andrew Tober going to go. We'll sort that out on the other side of the officials' timeout. 7-4 in favor of Barry. Today's broadcast is being brought to you by the Canadian Lacrosse League. Visit CanadianLacrosse.com for all your CLAX information. And of course, us here at JVI Sports Network. Visit JVISportsNetwork.com to have us come and broadcast your event live. And of course, the good folks at the Roland Systems Group for providing us with all our audio, video equipment, and the toys we get to play with when we come to work. Over in the corner, Dustin Caravello can't hang on. Officially, the penalty goes as an unsportsmanlike conduct. Minor penalty to Brian Campbell, and he was some ticked about it. As a shot there in front, 
Rings off the crossbar. Rebound gets up for Teeter, back for Caleb Wiles. Wiles with Daly on him, passes off. Look out, this one's coming to us. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Tober near side, gets a reset at center floor. Dustin Gatt opens the space for him, picking Caleb Wiles out of the way, and Tober shot just off the shoulder of Donnelly. And Donnelly just so steady for the blizzard back there. I think what Campbell was so upset about is he thought he was getting called. I'm not sure. I mean, unsportsmanlike. like it looked like they were calling him for illegal equipment for playing with his chin strap undone. He was upset because he was running to the bench to get replaced, even though they were in the defensive zone. It is the long run period for the defenders as Teeter into the corner. Shane Scott rifles it off the glass again. Ball held up there at center. That's where the Lock Monsters will take over as both sides make changes here. Streaking in Sullivan, dropping down as Dinely. It looks to be underneath him, though, as Colger will get there to restart. Gets up for Jeff Griffiths. And you can just sense the intensity of the Niagara Lock Monsters amping up. You can see it actually, I thought, on the shift defensively, just before Brian Campbell got called for that penalty, I thought they were really starting to step things up. Justin Pitchell going hard. They're really putting some pressure on, but uh, that they're still working it here with the shorthanded as Barry is going to fight out of the corner for another loose ball and a fresh 30. It will be A.J. Masson winning it. And Campbell back on the floor. Of course, a loss today for the Lock Monsters doesn't mathematically eliminate them from the postseason, but it makes things a lot more difficult. Heading into Barry next week, diving through there, a shot from A.J. Masson, saved by Buck, and he's going to reach out here and grab the rebound as Sullivan was dropped in front of him. Interesting to watch Bucken handling the ball around his crease. He's very much a jabber going after the ball. He, he tries to duck the stick under the ball rather than tending to clamp down on it and pull it back to him. Um, a little quicker to be able to get, come up and get the ball away if you get it that way, but there are times it looks like he, he risks just tossing the ball back to the opponent. Spencer drains, drills Dustin Gatt as the ball comes back the other way, so they call that a moving pick, and there's a shot from the outside. This will go over and back against... Niagara, so that play fairly meaningless except for the eight seconds it takes off the clock. As Barry starts with Cameron Rowe in the corner, Mike Teeter, hidden ball trick with Tomkinson. Looks like Teeter is kept though. Now he passes off for John Ray. Monroe again, his sidearm shot off the leg of Dumont it looked like, went sky high there for a minute. Teeter picks it off the turf. Peter behind his back, he was looking for Shane Scott. Bit nonchalant on that attempt, so Mitch Dumont gets under it. Pardon me, that was Devin Starter getting under it, passing up for Dumont, who gets it now. Looking quick stick for Rainberg on the crease. Mark Rainberg has to chase it down. Shane Scott on him, playing defense, knocks the ball free. Over to help out is Monroe. Through the legs from Rainberg, a nice little play there to get back for Connor Daly, but there's only three on the shot clock. And Daly's shot will go wide. So Teeter with it in his stick. He'll watch all his line mates jog to the bench. And a fresh set of legs. Out there for Barry. Koger's one of them as he goes low on Buckin. <laughs> Gillen thought he had an easy one there. And <laughs> That was quite a discussion between Gillen yeah. and John Watson. There was no whistle. Buckin was waiting for it, and then sounded like the whistle. I don't know. That was a weird one. Getting up slowly on this side is Caleb Wiles, and now get arrives on scene just as John Arnold takes the shot. Dinley's going to freeze that on the back of his net, and Wiles. Bit of a shot into the grill on Justin Pitchell, and Pitchell's gonna have to answer for this one as Rob Koger comes over after Pitchell got an extra chop. The helmet off for Rob Koger, and Pitchell lands a couple, and looking for the takedown. Now <laughs> Pitchell was looking to take Koger down, and he just stepped forward, and the whole pile ends up on the ground. 
Pitchell immediately off to the bench and Coger has some words for him. I'm sure part of it is, why don't you take your bucket off before you start throwing punches? Yeah. But uh, they were getting into it, as you said. Coger's been agitating for a good part of the last uh, half of the game. Caleb Wiles is going to the box as well, as you mentioned, for starting the whole thing. That's been the knock on Wiles. He has been a, a great offensive player, but when he's been snake bit in games, tends to get away from a bit. Here's how this one all starts. Keep your eye on Wiles coming in on scene right here. He gives it to Pitchell. Pitchell gives it to Wiles, and then Koger's gonna give it to Pitchell here as they both try and get the equipment free and start raining bombs. 2.07 on the clock, a three goal lead for Barry. And this will probably ignite one side, side or the other. Probably hoping it would be Niagara Lock Monsters if you're a fan of that team or a fan of really messy math. <laughs> but it also has the danger of getting Barry involved more in this game. But it does result in a power play, looks like, for the Lock Monsters, as Wiles got the extra penalty. Yeah, nothing going up yet. They're still trying to sort it out. John Watson talking to the folks in the score booth. Brad Favero and Spencer James having a chat about it, the respective captains. And you know, Niagara's really been working to try and create some chances, try and get some momentum back. And Barry's just doing a nice job of taking the opportunities to come to them. And Angus Dinley, as so often is the case for them, has just been a, a brick wall back there. I mean, haven't been fantastic scoring chances necessarily for Niagara, but they've had some pretty good opportunities. He's making everything look pretty simple. He's just in perfect position. And you know sometimes a goalie's getting into a team's head when they start shooting wide a lot. Niagara's really missing the net quite a bit Yeah, lately. you start to really finesse it, try and pick corners rather than just see what you can generate down there. Of course, looking for our three stars of the game, maybe Donnelly, maybe Doug Buckin on that list for you. As we pull up the stats here, Mike Teeter with the hat trick. And a couple of assists to go with it. So a pretty good game for him. Dustin Caravello, a couple assists in his first game. Shane Scott on the score sheet a couple times. So have a look at the stats and maybe pay attention to some defensive players on this. So Pitchell gets an extra two for roughing, which will even everything out. So as Niagara thought they were getting a power play, just like that, taken away, and will remain five on five down on the floor. That's gotta be the weakest roughing call I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I'm a fan. There was something there. Wiles was definitely bigger than his. I don't disagree with that. I don't obviously disagree with the fight, but yeah. I don't know. There was something there. Was it enough to draw to discuss amongst yourselves? Yeah. Going back at, uh, at Caleb Wiles. It's a little odd that we are actually five on five because usually with uh, incidental minor penalties, in Seelax, we will go four on four. Unless, is that not my imagining things? I don't know. I think with the, uh, oh, what's going on on the bench? Brad Favero, bucket off, the trainer's following him down the tunnel. And a goal, Dustin Caravello from A.J. Masson as Masson got the first shot. Sorry, we've been following the Brad Favero story all season long and now you can see he is bypassing the tunnel. He's gotta go down to the exit door. Donnelly's gonna go open it for him, it looks like. No, 
just have a word for him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, good sportsmanship from Dinley there. Favero looking quite distressed as he makes his way down. Here, though, we're going to see the goal. That's just a uh, tough break for Niagara, but a nice opportunism by Dustin Caravello. Had to be alert. He's got a few assists already in his return to the league, and he was ready to pounce on that ball coming off the backboards and just tuck it home. And it is eight to four with 16-12 to go in this game in Niagara. A lot of things working against them in terms of trying to maintain their playoff hopes. As we said, they're not eliminated if they lose today, but they certainly will not be in a very good position. Um, Southwest and Barry would both clinch playoff spots if the Blizzard can win this game. So Gillen and Gad again at the dot and that delay was for Favero getting off the floor. The trainer did go with him and she had to collect her trainer's gear to go down. That's why they called off the face off there. And she was still trying to make her way across the floor. Favero, Fowler though. Tainhouse another huge pick. This one on Ross Smith. And he comes back up for Tainhouse. He feeds in front. Dustin Gad is there standing tall Dinely. And stolen away, final 40 seconds here as the Blizzard begin running down the floor. Ross Smith will slow up, 30 seconds on the clock. Up for Maudsley. Maudsley, far side, Caravello, there's a shot coming from Tompkinson in front. Save from Bucking, it goes for Gat for Fowler now. 15 seconds as Fowler. He's pushed aside there by Shane Scott. Passing off Kevin Sullivan. Mod Melnichenko, rather, backs out. Falling Cody Ward as he takes a shot. A look from the clock from <laughs> Mike Modsley. Modsley. Alert, very alert of him to realize there was no time left, but a little optimistic to think even a shot was going to get there in time. I might as well have a go at it. 8-4 to four in favor of the Barry Blizzard. They're 15 minutes away from booking their tickets for the playoffs this year. Um, you can see the standings that we've been talking about. At Niagara, with a fifth loss, would put themselves in a tough spot. Barry with a fourth win, as we said, would clinch. So would Southwest. That would mean Durham and Asweekin each with two games to go, could eliminate the Niagara Lock Monsters by winning their games. They yeah, they would, both would book themselves tickets into the playoffs as well. They both have tiebreakers over Niagara as well. As we can, a 2-0 record would get them there. Durham uh, and Niagara, a 1-1 record, but the goal, the goal differential is in favor of plus one over the Durham Turf Dogs. The Niagara Lock Monsters do hold the tiebreaker over the Southwest Cyclops <laughs> with a plus, plus three goal differential. But, uh, and of course, depending what happens here against Barry, they could win that tiebreaker. Even if they lose today, they do get Barry uh, next weekend on March the 8th at the Barry Molson Center. So uh, get your tickets for that one as that could be the playoff picture. The whole Lock Monster squad is gathered around head coach Matt Atwood. He is giving a pretty impassioned speech to them down there, you know the gist of it's got to be something along the lines of this isn't over. It's we can we know we can score four goals in a quarter. Just play our defensive system, believe in yourself, believe in Doug Bucking, and come out and make the most of your opportunities. They just got to bury the ball. They've had some chances. Angus Dinley has been very good. And you know, from Barry's perspective, I'm sure they're saying, keep going the way we're going, keep the pressure on, don't back off on it because it is keeping the ball up in the offensive zone and, and make, having smart possessions is going to be the best factor for them, letting, you know, using up a lot of clock, but, but still trying to create scoring opportunities. And the minor, the Justin Pitchell and Caleb Wiles has expired, so Wiles returns to the floor before Justin Pitchell does this. He's got to sit for the next five with Rob Koger as well. <coughs> So Koger, a defensive presence for the Blair Barry Blizzard, but they get their offensive weapon back. And of course, on the other side of the ball, the captain has gone to the room for the Lock Monsters as Brad Favero hobbled off. This is Canadian Lacrosse League action on the JVI Sports Network. In action it is as 
A penalty here coming to John Ray of the Barry Blizzard for that huge hit on Cody Ward. And Ray doesn't agree with it. And I think what they're doing here is just they're going to call two minutes for checking from behind, and they really want to rein things in. This has been a chippy affair from the start. Passion's pretty high throughout the game, and with the fight, it looks like they're just really focusing on getting control of what's going on. Well, the teams I mean, get it was a, a it was a penalty by the yeah, rule, yeah, yeah. by the rule. And the teams get a chance to discuss things, as do the officials. So usually if you're going to see something like that, it comes at the very start of the next quarter. As we watch Dylan Lord, Devin Sarter again. They continue to work it outside with Tainhouse on the far side. Dylan Lord, oh, oh. his sidearm shot. Masson gets that right off the kidney pads. And a bit of a flex there. As the shot clock expires, just as Spencer James picks up. A four goal lead, as we said, for the Barry Blizzard is they're killing a penalty and they do it with Spencer James. Vradenberg and Sarter chase him all the way across the floor, back into the corner again. And he beats them again. Now he's gonna, oh, I thought he was gonna go around the world. I think he shot. tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great execution by Spencer James until the around the world attempt, which didn't quite work out, but nice job of continuing to move, seeing where he had some a lane to get the ball up past the restraining line. And then controlling the ball for a while, but now we're back up at the other end, Niagara, trying to get back into this one. Here's Mel Nichenko. Vradenberg on the crease. He was looking for Tainhouse, it looked like. They go back for Mel Nichenko on the crease now for Dylan Lord. Oh, and Corey Fowler just grabs that loose ball out of nowhere. The pass attempt was trying to go across to Dylan Lord for the quick stick. It was knocked down by the Barry player, but couldn't quite be held. And that led to the opportunity for Corey Fowler, who just zipped in, grabbed the ball, cut to the net, and buried it behind Dinelli. Here you see it. Melnichenko's gonna try and rip it over to Lord, and it just bounces away from Jeff Griffiths. He is heading up the other way, throws his arms up in dismay when he sees what has happened as the ball is just left sitting there for one of the most dangerous offensive players in Sealax, in Corey Fowler. Will that give some momentum to the Niagara Lock Monsters? Gillen comes out of the faceoff with the ball and recovers it after an initial drop. Ball carrier falls again here in front of Cody Ward. As it comes back to the restraining line and Barry answers. Caleb Wiles burying another shot. You mentioned that once he finds his range, he can really do some damage. He rips that one home and Mike Gillen will get an assist. It'd be nice if you could give him two assists on that one. What a great effort. There you see the trainer heading off to the dressing room to help Brad Favero make sure uh, he's getting the treatment he needs. What an effort by Mike Gillen, especially here coming up out of two men on top of him as he's down on the floor, gets it off to Caleb Wiles and Wiles does the rest. This scrum off the draw as it was drawn back. It looked like Daly flipped it outside the line, but usually the face off possession, they allow that to go as they've been doing all day. Daly. Over for Tober, it comes back for Daly. His shot goes just wide and then up into the screening. Didn't hit anything before it got there. So Barry <laughs> will continue. Griffiths ran right into the midsection of Tober and kept chasing them. Tober was trying to get away. But it was Griffiths pushing him. I think Griffiths may be trying to draw the delay of game penalty there. Yeah, it looks like that was what he was aiming for. And the officials made him back all the way back down the floor. The pass intercepted the other way, though, by the Lock Monsters, and John Arnold will circle the crease. Uses Dylan Lord as a bit of a pick. Circles back around to his left. There's Dumont in the corner for Lord. Dustin Gatt. Gatt backs into the check, stays out of the crease. Just flips the shot over Dinely. Got a piece of it, though. Dylan Lord walking off the corner. Delayed penalty here. And it will be to the Barry Blizzard as Sarter 
Slows down and he's got Fowler up top. Tane House runs into the middle, right into Maudsley and we've got a second penalty. A slash coming to Daryl Robertson and a high stick to Jeff Griffith. And Dustin Gatt will head to the bench and should get plenty of plaudits from his teammates. First of all, I mean, you wonder how a guy the size of Dustin Gatt can, can play in a league with such with some big strong guys like this he shows you how powerful his lower body is by fighting as you said to stay out of the crease with daryl roberts and a big strong guy trying to push him in and uh, again managed to get the, the shot off and uh, draws the penalty there goes the original call is going to jeff griffiths and then the second one to robertson that precipitated the whistle so Lock Monster set up. Dylan Lord, no looks. Fake the shot, passes to Vradenberg and the quick stick as the Lock Monsters begin to close the gap. They'll send Griffiths out of the box. But it is a goal for the Niagara Lock Monsters. Make it 9-6 now, and that took all of 12 seconds. Yeah, that's a lot of time wasted by Niagara. Vradenberg's gonna start things up by moving it around the horn, and Dylan Lord just the simple pass. You simply cannot guard everybody. And uh, if you make the perfect pass, it's awfully tough to stop them from putting that one home. Outside of 11 minutes to go here, there's a discussion about the time clock. And we can tell you the trainer is back on the bench for Niagara, but Brad Favero is not. And there she is. So we'll assume that Favero is done for the day, which is quite unfortunate. Well, and just judging by the look on his face, he, he knew. Uh, definitely, yeah, he, it, it was pretty clear that he, he probably re-injured the uh, He, he didn't, the look, didn't look 100% even in warm-up as he walked no. past us down in the tunnel, but... I guess needing players, needing guys, and at this point in the season. But uh, yeah, tough break for one of the good guys of the game. Tainhouse took that shot and then he goes down holding his midsection. Here's Vradenberg, a replay of the last goal, but this one goes wide. And Tainhouse, and Tainhouse is really is looking down. like he's in distress. I, I think it may be his hand. He took that hard shot. Didn't look like anyone was even particularly close to him. And he just went down. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. He is really in a lot of pain. We'll watch the play again. Here he is up top. Just kind of looking around, sees it open, takes the shot, and it's definitely just the shot. These things can happen with last year. Patrick Saunders did, uh, Patrick Saunders broke his hand taking a shot when he was playing for the Peterborough Lakers. We ended up missing most of the season, so we certainly hope it's not that. He gets a nice hand from the fans here as he gets up, but he is also heading down. No, he's gonna go no, to the bench. Turns right. Looked like he was heading for the dressing room as well. He will stay on the bench, but boy, if they're down to 14 runners, that's gonna make it that much tougher to come back from the three goal deficit. They still are on the power play and almost lost amidst, for certainly for us watching Tainhouse and seeing how much pain he was in, was that Vradenberg almost put that ball in the net, but it just went a little wide, went into the backside of the mesh instead of the front. So Shane Scott wheeling around the near side, goes the length of the floor with Connor Daly on him, less than a minute to go in the power play. It is Niagara's power play as Shane Scott will now backpedal. And the big loss for Tainhouse is that body as he was the guy that was opening space. The bench asking for a reset, but none upcoming. Shane Scott gets it tipped out of his stick. John Arnold didn't think it was put down quick enough. And we could hear Rob Blaisdell, the GM of the Blizzard, calling for that reset. We're on the far side of the arena wearing headsets, and there's music playing in the arena, and it was clear yeah. that he was asking <laughs> for one. Sarder and Fowler down in the corner, Dylan Lord. Back for Fowler, Jeff Griffiths falls in front, Melnichenko got the pass. Looks like Melnichenko 
Sarder, Malnichenko and Sarder switching spots so Sarder can take the shooter spot as Malnichenko slides over to fill in for Favero. And Tainhouse is still in the crouch. He hasn't managed to get upright even as the trainer is still with him on the bench. Radenberg on the crease, shoots a quick release shot. No wind up at all as he gets it around Robertson into the midsection of Dinley in the save made. And Dinley just ready for the shot. He is uh, such a good positional goaltender. We see his acrobatics a lot of the time, but he is fundamentally just quite sound. Pass out of the reach of Justin Pitchell. Goes to his right. Spinning around there behind the back from Latimer, just wide of the net. As Bucking corrals it, gets it up for Vradenberg. Two on one with Dylan Lord. The last man back is Robertson. They go for Lord, looking five hole on Dinley. And Dinley there to make the save. Immediately gets it up for Crawford. Pardon me, Caravello, Dustin Caravello. At the restraining line with... Zach Tomkinson breaking in. Here's Mike Teeter side stepping outside the line. Teeter into a shot. He looks five hole and Dinley, pardon me, Buckin makes that save and then outlets Dylan Lord who shoots it just off the left arm of Dinley. And that's a big save. That's a potential momentum turner for the Lock Monsters. Remember last year it was Dinley who did that to force overtime against the Oswegian Demons. Pretty much changed their season around for the Barry Blizzard last year. Masson up the floor for Janes. He's got a breakaway, and he doesn't miss. Through the legs of Buckin. Spencer Janes, not known for his offensive prowess. He is now. But he, that was a <laughs> nice little move to tuck that one home. James. He does have a goal already this year. This will be his second. But that's a nice hard fake. Sees the little hole, five hole, and tucks it home. Big momentum swing. Gillen wins the faceoff. Tompkinson draws it out. And he's going to slow things down, walking out of the corner inside officials' timeout territory now in the fourth quarter. As it's a four goal lead for Barry. Pass out of the reach of Gillen. So Dumont goes after it. Back up the floor. Here comes Niagara. Dustin Gatt just getting it over center. Johnny Ray trying to force the over and back, but likes to go for Cody Ward in the corner. Fowler falls now. Gets up and accepts the pass. Takes a shot in that one. That hit Gillen high, and Gillen is down. As an epidemic on the floor now. Oh, it Gillen has been a distress. tough game for everyone here. Gillen, as you can see, you pointed out, not looking very comfortable. He just crumples to the floor after taking that shot. And Gillen is going to get up here and make his way to the bench. Just this one, tough this one was scary, actually. Oh, not sure where that caught him. The way he reacted, it looked like it caught him up high. And this will be the official's timeout. We'll give you one more look before we take a break here. And Gillen is the man on the right. It oh, does. In the chest. Right. Just around the collar, but that is painful. A lucky break, though, if that's... We don't even want to think about half an inch higher than that. We'll take a timeout.
Well, there's one of the leaders of the Lock Monsters, and with Favero out, they will rely on him heavily. Corey Fowler leading the team in points, third in the league. As he accepts the pass there, gets it started, passes off to Melnichenko. And it looks like Brendan Tainhouse probably would be done for the afternoon. We haven't seen him back. The trainer had gone to the room. I believe Tainhouse went with him. Melnichenko, the outside shot. He's filled in there by Koger. As they look for Lord, it's just above him. And Koger does pick up the loose ball. Is three lock monsters attack. Down the floor, though, Daryl Robertson, the shot. And Buckin hasn't been called, along, called upon very often in that quarter. I think a lot of them ended up going through him, actually. Yeah. Comes up with that save though. Here's Vradenberg, spins around. Nice slide there by Cam Monroe. Recognizing Shane Scott back for a defensive shift. Mike Teeter out there as well. Shot goes off the boards. That one from Connor Daly. As the lines starting to get all kinds of mixed up. You know, Barry with a four to nothing third quarter, and then Niagara trying to battle their way back in. And each time Niagara scored their two goals this quarter, Barry has just responded with, uh, with their own. And that's been the problem for Niagara, those quick starts. They let teams get away and they've got to play catch up all season long. Caravello plays it off the glass. He's trying to outrace Connor Daly. Caravello Remember. falls and Daly's gonna pick up here. Big hit by Teeter, picked up by Vradenberg. Remember, you've got a one last chance to let us know who you think should be the three stars. Tweet us at JVI video. Get it to us right away so we can take it into consideration. Vradenberg, offer a player to watch Devin Sarter. Dustin Gatt takes out two defenders in front to allow Sarter the shot and shot it wide. So picked out of the corner by Dumont. Melnichenko, tons of space, looking down low, and then falling on it was the Barry player. AJ Masson, it was underneath him. Managed to keep it, keep it live long enough to get it in the crease, roll off it so he didn't freeze the, the ball in the crease. And finally picked up. Here's Masson now. Masson for Griffiths. Jeff Griffiths has Kevin Sullivan on him. So he passes off for Shane Scott. Shane Scott dancing his way through Melnichenko. And then in on Buckin. And the shot went wide and Shane Scott was still in the crease. Center floor of the battle on between Melnichenko and Ross Smith. Melnichenko wins that battle. Ford stripped by Jeff Griffiths, three and a half. Griffiths has it back for Barry. They're up by four now, 10-6. As Jeff Griffiths is gonna be pushed aside here by Cody Ward. Teeter circles the net. Ward still goes with him, under 10 on the shot clock though. As Griffiths, pardon me, Cam Monroe walks out and shoots it just in front of Buckin. All the way outside, it's rolled in there by Gillen. And Gillen, you see him still playing with that shoulder there as he, he does, did return to the floor, but definitely not feeling 100% for Mike Gillen. Shot underneath of Dinley. And it squirts out the pants. Oh. Whew, just wide. Cameron Rowe gets there just in time. <laughs> and a word shared between Donnelly and a chuckle between him and John Watson. Watson must have had a, a look at where that ball was and realized it wasn't caught up completely in Donnelly, or he probably would have blown it down if it was in the equipment. But uh, that turned out to be a dangerous one as Donnelly hopped up. Here's Vradenberg. It is go time now for the Niagara Lock Monsters. As they've got Dylan Lord, who just 
Stumbles after being knocked off balance. Taking off on the dead ball. There's the shot. Comes from Connor Latimer as Mitch Dumont goes with him. Was restarted while he was in stride. Now the goaltender, Doug Bucken, heads for the bench. So extra attacker will be on. Corey Fowler, far side. They go Vradenberg, back Melnichenko. Vradenberg again, his shot just off the side of the net. And it's up for Tompkinson. Nice job to flip it over here. And diving attempt, a couple lock monsters trying desperately to save their season. And that looks like it may do it for this game and perhaps the playoff hopes of the defending champs. And you know that last play kind of symbolizes or captures what has happened for Niagara in this game. Not a bad effort. They've been working. They've been trying to do the right things. It just hasn't worked out for them. They've just simply been outplayed by Barry today. And, you know, it's just not their day. Big part of the credit, obviously going to Angus Dinley, who has stopped them when, it, when they have had good chances. As it always does. Yeah. Took a while to get him back into the lineup after being picked up in the Toronto Shooting Stars dispersal draft. But ever since that day, this has been a much different Barry Blizzard team. For a year and a half, it looked like very sad things, and they're on the verge of knocking out the champions. Came within a goal of doing it last year in the playoffs and just came up shy in the semifinals. An outside shot there from Wiles with 50 seconds to go. Buckin will make the save. He looks to the bench. They don't call him, so perhaps a bit of a wave of the white flag. Staring down five and one last ditch effort for the Niagara Lock Monsters will come next week in Barrie. Outside shot from Dumont as Dinley makes the save. Lord in on him and Jeff Griffiths will bring it up the far side. Three seconds separates the game and the shot clock. As Tober's gonna play through to the last whistle up for Shane Scott. Tober still gonna chase him down. Pardon me, Mitch Dumont now. As there's five on the shot clock, Barry content to go for the field goal. Yeah. Thought they were gonna Give that one as a souvenir, but <laughs> put it in the books for the Barry Blizzard, an 11-6 victory. That takes them to four wins and a share of first place overall with the Southwest Cyclops. Although Southwest has clinched that tiebreaker with a one plus one goal differential. So Barry has work to do to get to first place overall by themselves. But it started here and it will continue as they've got a couple games in hand. Well, they could get some help as well as Durham and Oswekin by winning could get, I mean, one of them will as they, uh, I believe they're playing each other, right? Bear, Durham is playing in Oswekin. One of them will win and get a fourth victory, which will make it a three-way tie. So that that's going to be, uh, we're going to have to look a little deeper into the tiebreakers and figure those out. You went through and tried to figure out a bunch of the tiebreaker scenarios last night getting ready for this game. I started and I just stopped. Because <laughs> I just realized there were so many permutations and combinations of what could happen in Sealax in these final couple of weeks. This definitely clears up a lot. We know that Southwest and Barrie are in the playoffs. We know that Niagara is clinging for dear life to their playoff hopes. It really will depend what happens with the other teams. The, uh, the winner of that Osweek and Durham game will be in the playoffs. So it's gonna come down to, uh, to the loser of that game and the Niagara Lock Monsters battling for the final spot. And it'll depend on what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Durham will have another game at Southwest on Saturday, March the 14th. And the final game of the season on the 15th in Barrie, the Osweek and Demons will face the Barrie Blizzard and we remember the fireworks that happened last yeah. year. That could be for the seasons of both those clubs and everyone else involved in Sealax. <laughs> Terrific effort today by both teams. Again, I mentioned it before, I don't think it was a lack of effort by the Niagara Lock monster, the, no, Monsters that cost them. Barry just executed better on this day. So now it, it wasn't 
it wasn't a must win for Barry today, or for Niagara rather, but it will be a must win next week in Barry. The Niagara Lock Monsters face the Barry Blizzard Sunday, March the 8th at the Barry Molson Center. And then on the 15th, the Oswegian Demons at the Barry Blizzard. That one also at the Barry Molson Center. Visit ticketpro.ca or canadianlacrosse.com for your tickets to that game. If you live in the Paris or Brantford area, the Durham Turf Dogs visit the Southwest Cyclops, the final game in Paris, the Sillaps Community Center. That'll be a good one, as it always is out in Paris. It's been a great year out there, actually, for Durham and Southwest. That one on March 14th. And then Friday night at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena and the Durham Turf Dogs face the Oswegian Demons. So all the teams, well, everybody's in the hunt, but... Uh, yeah, just four everybody. games left in the entire CELAC season. It goes so quickly with the eight-game schedule. We are going to go to our three stars, our third star today, with uh, with a goal and a couple of assists. And great work, as always, in the face-off circle, um, getting up from that shot. Mike Gillen, the, uh, the shot to the chest. Just another really strong performance by him all over the floor. It really was. And uh, at the face-off dot as well, getting things restarted. Uh, that's usually, that's one of the biggest spots on the floor in my opinion because it can kill momentum or it can continue momentum uh, winning those face-offs. And Gillen, he was at it right from the start, him and Tommy Watt in the corner working on their face-off drills. And uh, a huge game for him, our second star. Our second star, back in net, Angus Dinelli. What a performance once again, just allowing six goals and again making so many of them look like easy saves because of his positioning. He's such a smart goaltender, reads his angles very well, reacts to the way the play is developing, and is just in position when the shot comes. And you saw that as we talked about Niagara, trying to force things sometimes, going a little wide with their shots, but you see why, because he just stopped everything that was on the net. Well, I remember what the team used to look like before he came back, and uh, you know, it was either Scotty Comer, Derek Collins, um, who was the other one? I forget, uh, Zach Bowen. I Zach believe Bowen, yeah. uh, they, they didn't really have a, th a third. They mixed all kinds of other people in, different combinations of starter and backup. And uh, really, until he showed up, there was no one or even two, with all due respect to those guys. Uh, nothing really figured out. Now they've got the number one. There's The defense knows what's back there. So does the offense. Really solidified that team. I guess we'd say great A Angus. There you go. And, and our, our first, first star of the game, here we go. We have uh, Mike Teeter with three goals and three assists, and he really benefited, we said, from the return of Caleb Wiles, but Teeter doing all the work to take advantage of the space that opened up for him with some very nice shots and some nice plays to get his teammates open and give them opportunities. And uh, Mike Teeter, who's really been a terrific addition to this team as well. So the champions are on the ropes after this weekend. We look ahead now to next week once again, Friday night, the Durham Turf Dogs, the Oswegian and Demons. Steven Stamp will be there from the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. Steven Stamp and Ron Ruff on Sunday, the Niagara Lock Monsters will face the Barry Blizzard. On behalf of our director, Alex Frazzo, our producer, Gary Morrison, everyone involved with our JBI Sports Network crew and the Canadian Lacrosse League, including my partner Stephen Stamp. I am Matthew Carrick and we will talk to you next week.